Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the basics of the Crazy Talk Animator 3 UI, user interface. We have a lot of stuff to cover here, uh, so let's just jump into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is everything you see on the screen right now, what it does and how you can use it in your project, okay? So first of all, let's take a look at the top here. We have a main menu, uh, this is our main menu, File, Edit, Create, Animation. All the tools, basically, all the stuff you see in here can generally be found uh, on the toolbar or in other areas on your UI. Um, you can find your animations here. Uh, for your project settings and preferences, you go to edit down here. Um, that's some important stuff. And uh, controls for your timeline, uh, render, you can render video, all that stuff. That can be found on the toolbar as well. We're going to focus on view and window here, though, because this is stuff that's, uh, you know, focused on the main menu. We have our on-screen display. You can see the frames per second in the in the left uh, top left there, frames per second. You can turn that on or off. You can turn the grid on or off. We can't see the grid at the moment. Uh, it's in the background, but I'll show you that later. And the world axis is a little world axis by our character's knees. We can turn that on and off as well. And stage and composer is this little icon here that indicates whether you are in stage or composer mode. We can uh, toggle that on and off. I'll just show you the stage and composer mode as an example here. You can turn it off just like that and then go to on-screen display and turn it back on. Okay, and then we can also go to full screen mode here like this. And we still have a safe area. The, the blue box is the uh, safe area. If you press escape, you can get out of that mode. And you can also go into full screen mode without the safe area. And then there's camera view here as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later and switch to 3D view as well. Uh, window, we have a couple of different uh, toolbars here. The project toolbar, which you can see on the top uh, left there. If I turn that off, that'll get rid of the project toolbar there. I'll restore that for now. And basically all these toolbars, you can uh, you know make them invisible or visible on your uh, UI by deselecting these uh, buttons up here. There's also the timeline, which generally you'd want to keep invisible unless you're editing and the content manager and scene manager, which can be found over here in these two tabs, content manager and scene manager. So you can also use the F3, F4 and F5 hotkeys to toggle the visibility. So if I pressed F4 right now, it'll uh, toggle my content manager away. I can press it again and then we have our content manager here. All right. And the second thing I'm going to talk about is, of course, the content manager and the uh, scene manager over here. So the content manager over here on the right is where you can generally add stuff to your scene. So say, for example, we wanted to add a prop or an actor to our scene. We have, we have actors here. This is where all your characters will be. Uh, animations are the various animations you can apply to your character. You can twirl up and down various folders just like that. And the scene is where you can find all the scenes uh, that, that come up pre-constructed uh, pre with Crazy Talk Animator 3. If we uh, scroll down here a little bit, you can see all of our different uh, scenes as well. And there's also image layers and backgrounds. We won't get, we'll get too much into detail here. Uh, SFX are just some sound effects and uh, text effects that you can use. Um, some sounds, uh, text, comic text and all this stuff, comic bubbles. Uh, we'll go, to, go, go uh, get into that in more detail on other tutorials. Props is where you're going to spend a lot of time probably uh, adding and uh, removing props from your scene. And elastic motions are, uh, we have a whole separate tutorial on that, just a very dynamic motions that are new with Crazy Talk Animator 3. And you can check out that tutorial uh, for more details on that. Let's take a look at how to add a prop, for example. Let's just take a prop here. And I'm going to just go to my prop, uh, G3 Animated Prop folder up here. And you can see we have this alarm clock, because if you want an alarm clock on the beach, if you want to add that to your scene, you can right click it and just add it to your scene like this. And then you can uh, use this uh, little doodad here, gizmo, to resize it. You can move it around like this. Or you can use this one down here to make it further back or forward on your Z axis. This is your 3D axis, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, and you can right click your prop. And when you right click it, you have the option for all these other things. You can uh, edit the prop in various ways of the action menu. You can animate it. Alarm clock stop, start, for example, you right click again, action menu, alarm clock uh, ringing, ding, just like that, okay? And if you want to delete it, you can just press delete, okay? And delete that clock. Um, let's go ahead and try another example here. This time we'll use a character. So I'm going to take a character here, and I'll just bring in another, uh, let's bring in her companion here, the elastic folks dude with the uh, shorts. So when we click, we can click and drag that guy onto the screen, or what we can do, I'm just going to delete him one more time here. We can just double click from the content manager as well. And when you double click, your character will add to the scene root, which I showed you later, which was placed around the, the character's knees there. All right. So then we can just move him, you know, somewhere else like this. All right. And let's take a look now at, that's pretty much the basics of the content manager. You can go up here and, and change your view of the content manager. You can undock the window. You can hide it. Um, you can change your view mode by pressing control one here. 
Uh, I'm going to show you that what that does. You can press Control One uh, with your Content Manager activated, and it'll show you different views like this. So it really depends on the kind of view you'd like. I generally like to keep the icons uh, large like this, so uh, you can also go into this here and uh, use this mode here, Control One. Okay. Well, let's take a look now at the Scene Manager, which you can find down here. In the scene manager, you're going to find all the stuff in your scene from seagulls to sand piles to surfboards to everything basically in your scene you can find here. You can decide to show it or hide it. So for example, we have two G3 actors right here. We can uh, show them individually or hide them individually just like this. We can hide them both by selecting this button right here. And we can hide everything in our scene by selecting this button right here. And there's the grid I was talking about earlier uh, that we can toggle on or off. I'm going to make sure all our scene stuff is shown here. And then you can also lock stuff. So say, for example, I wanted to uh, add a big selection that I wanted to move, but I didn't want to move my character in the middle there. I'm going to just go ahead and lock her. And then I can go up here. We're going to talk about this later. Use the select tool, and I can just drag a big selection area around everything. And I'm going to move it all. And you can see that she is not selected, and she will not be moved as a result. Okay, I'm going to press Control-Z and undo that. Cool. All right, so that's the basics of the scene manager. Pretty simple stuff. I'm just going to uh, unlock my character now. Now, as far as your uh, toolbars go, we have this simple stuff up here. New project, open project, save project. You can uh, click this one to go into the marketplace, and you can purchase uh, other content for your Crazy Talk Animator 3 program, from characters to props and everything. Over here, we also have an option to preview, to preview the current frame. So you can press F10 to do that as well. If I preview it, it'll just... Uh, show a preview of our scene in uh, uh, whatever photo viewer you have here. You can close that down. And you can also uh, export your entire project like this. So this is where you uh, export. You can export to video, um, all sorts of formats here. You can export up to 4K, uh, the frame size. You can see all the way down here, 4K 2160p, and a whole bunch of different formats. Uh, we'll talk about that in other uh, tutorials. And if you want to export an image by itself, you can export images or image sequences. You can select current frame or an image sequence. Okay, and we'll close that down now as well. Now as for navigating your scene, I'm going to select my character here. We don't need him in the scene anymore. We'll just delete him. Okay, so this one here is undo. Okay, and then we have duplicate. All right, you can also hold control and click and drag your item as well if you want. So if I wanted to duplicate this female, I can just uh, duplicate her right here. And that'll create an identical copy, which I can just move over here. We can control Z and undo that if we want. Let's press control Z twice to undo the duplication, or I can just hold control and click and drag. And that's going to create another copy, which I prefer to use that method. I'll control Z that and undo that all as well. Okay. And beside the duplicate, we have the option to apply a selected render style. So render style, if we select this uh, uh, beach ball, for example, you can see render style will appear on the left hand toolbar. We can change all these values here. We can make it a desaturated um, beach ball. And once we do that, that's going to be saved to that beach ball. And what we can do is once the beach ball is selected, we can select render style, apply render style. And we can apply it to anything else on our scene to make it black and white, just like this. Now, render style gets a bit more complicated. Uh, we, can, we have a separate tutorial on that. You can uh, go into that in more detail. I'm going to press Control Z a couple times here to... Uh, Restore everything back to its original colors. Okay, so that's the basics for render style. And if you want to get out of that icon, just press the escape key. Okay, and this one over here is for uh, horizontally flipping your items on the screen. So if I select this uh, chair, for example, I can select horizontal flip, flip it the other direction. I can also do vertical flip, okay, which doesn't make a lot of sense in this context. Whoops. Uh, it's just uh, horizontal flip and vertical flip it back to the original uh, position there. Okay, and we also have link as well. Now, Link, I'm going to show you in just a moment here. Uh, but first, let's talk about visibility. So visibility is really simple. If you want stuff to appear or, or disappear at certain points in your scene, say, for example, we want this ball to disappear for some reason at frame 51, which I just scrolled down there. Well, I can just select Invisible, and it's going to make the ball invisible at frame 51. Okay, I can click and drag this little doodad here to go through the timeline, and boop, this disappears, okay? You can also press the space key to play back your uh, scene as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, uh, right-click this ball, and I'm going to select Remove Object Animation. This is a way you can just remove all the animation, all the linking, all the visibility on your ball. So now you can see I can uh, just move it like that, and the ball stays there. Okay, so that's visibility. Let's talk about linking now. 
Now to show linking, I'm gonna have to do a quick animation. And for that, I'm gonna select this boat here in the background. I'm gonna to go to uh, frame 50. I'm just gonna click and drag over here to about uh, frame 47 will do. And I'm gonna move this boat somewhere over here on the horizon, okay? Let's press stop here and go back to frame one. Let's see, there's our boat. Uh, traveling at quite a quite a fast speed there. Now say for example I wanted this boat to follow that boat. Well I can just go ahead and link it. So I can go over here to link and select this boat and then play back and both boats will go at the same speed. Now say for example halfway through I wanted it to unlink behind this character then I can just go ahead with the boat selected and select unlink. Okay now it'll stop behind our character and the other boat will continue on a little bit more, okay? It seems like they almost stopped at the same time. Let's go maybe to about here, and we can, better example, unlink it there, all right? And then here we have this, and this will stop there, and it'll kind of snap to over there. We don't really want that, but I just kind of wanted to show you. Let's remove the animation here. Do that one more time. Link to this boat, and then to this point here, and we will unlink it. And you'll see the difference, all right? This one stops and that one keeps going. Okay, so we have our boats animated. Now over here we have the uh, camera animations. We'll talk about that uh, later on. We'll do that, we'll do that for the last thing actually. Uh, down here we have all of our transform values. So this is like your uh, the world values of your object on the scene. So if I select this uh, boat here, for example, and I, uh, I move it around, notice that the Y and X values, and because the other one's linked, that one's moving as well. Uh, the Y and X values are moving around. Um, I can control Z and undo that there. If I move it here, the Z act, the Z values are moving on the screen right there. You can also manually type in the values that you want. And if I selected this beach ball, for example, I can change the width and height. Currently they are not, uh, they are not linked. So if I go like this, I can make it larger or smaller on one axis. And I'm just going to control Z that. However, if I link them, then we're not going to have those options to change the width and the height separately. Okay. So that's it. And then rotation here is pretty simple, straightforward. We'll rotate the ball up to 360 degrees. Let's place it right there. Okay. 270 is fine. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Over here, we have a couple options for uh, zero key. When you press zero key, all it's going to do is it's going to move your object to the center of the scene right here. So where the world axis is, like I showed you before, it's going to just move it to that center of the screen. I'm going to press control Z and undo that this time. And we're going to talk a little bit, a bit about the curve and the linear. So let's select this boat, and you can see this little green line appears to uh, show our animation of the boat. Well, let's go a little bit ahead. Let's go to uh, uh, maybe frame 100, and let's move this boat down to about here. Okay, so it's going to make a pretty sharp turn. Okay, now the problem here is that if we play back, it's going to be a very sharp turn. We're going to look very unrealistic, just like that. But what we can do is we can actually change this from a linear uh, curve to a curvy curve, <laughs> from linear to curve. And we can actually manually take these points here, our transform points for our boat. Okay, so we can play back and see he'll make a nice uh, curve just like that. And then he'll be uh, beached on the, on the beach, almost beached because the tide was coming out there. Okay, so we have that nice uh, curved animation just like that. All right, so let's just uh, go back to frame one here. And that's basically all there is for your toolbars. Now let's talk about the timeline and animation. So the timeline can be found down here. You can press this button right here to enter your timeline. I prefer just to use the F3 hotkey and it'll open it up. And let's do a little bit of camera animation. So currently right now, uh, you can see we have camera record mode off, okay? This is our zoom. Uh, this is the pan, okay? There's a Z, X hotkeys and the C hotkeys, which you can use as uh, shortcuts for this, okay? And there's also the home, okay? So let's take a look at the home first. So if I select home, it's gonna be basically the view, the centered view right here. I can go to uh, focus on an object like this. You can also use the F hotkey to focus on an object. I can go back to the home. If I select uh, the starfish, for example, and I press the F hotkey, you'll see that it'll focus on the starfish. And then we can go back to home, all right? And there's also focus on everything in the scene and it'll zoom out so you can see everything that's included in your entire scene. All right, let's just go back to the home uh, area here. And let's take a look at how to animate the camera. So I'm gonna go into camera record mode here. All right, and now when you see the red box around your scene, that means you can animate your camera. So let's hold the Alt key and the left mouse button. I'm gonna click and drag, and that's just an easier way to pan, okay? 
Now you can hold the Alt key and you can hold both mouse buttons to zoom in and out. That's an easier way to zoom in and out. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, what you need to know there. All right, so let's go ahead and maybe uh, hold Alt and left mouse button and go over to this point here. So this is what we're gonna see in our scene. And then let's go over to, uh, maybe a little bit closer here. And then maybe over to frame, I don't know, I think we're at frame 100 when we stop the boat animation. And let's click and drag over here, have our character centered, and maybe zoom in a little bit, okay? Again, holding Alt and both mouse buttons to zoom in like that. Now, the way we can see what happened uh, with the camera animation is we can go over here, and in the timeline, there's a track list. I'm going to open the project track list, and in project, there is a camera. And you can see the camera, we added two keyframes in the camera track. Okay, so that's just your camera animation. If I click and drag in this area here, we can see our animation as it's playing along. Okay, pretty cool. And we can just go ahead and play back. And that's what's going to render in our final render. Okay, and if you want to change the size of your project, an easy way to do that is just click on your timeline uh, here and click and drag this little triangle doodad, and you'll, you'll see it appear on the screen pretty soon in, in the timeline there. Appear on the right hand side, there it is. All right, and you can make your timeline, or you can make your entire project that long, okay? And then if I play back, it's gonna stop where you see that little doodad right there, okay? Indicator right there, and that's where our project is finished. So if you render, we're only gonna have a few seconds of render time, okay? So these are your, your basic, um, you know, uh, frame or uh, tools on the timeline here. You can go from frame by frame, just like this, okay? You can go to the end of your project like that or the beginning of your project. Um, there's also the loop uh, off. If you wanna loop your project, you can loop it on or off. This one here is the project settings and the timeline. And this one here is to change your sound effects volume on and off. This one's to change your speech on and off, okay? And that's basically it. Another cool thing about the timeline, if you want to select a different item, um, it's, it'll appear on the timeline if you have this option selected, Object Related Track. I, I usually keep this on because you can just uh, select any item and it'll show up in the timeline, the palm tree. You can see right here, the surfboard, and you can close objects in the timeline just like this. All right, so that's basically it for the timeline. Let's go back to like fr this frame or something so we can uh, see our character on the screen. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is the toolbar on the left. This is just basic, uh, the basic stuff I mentioned earlier. We're not going to worry too much about this. If we select our character, here's where you can modify your character in composer mode. All right, uh, you can modify in composer mode. This is where you can create a new character. This one here is creating a new prop or creating new media. All right, so if I select that, you can create a pop, image layer, or background. And we have we'll talk about that in other tutorials. Here, if you have a character selected, you can create a script for your character to lip sync. And here's the render style I showed you earlier. And below render style is the runtime composer. So these ones are all for basically editing uh, the appearance of your prop or character on the screen, uh, not in composer mode, okay? And then there's a 3D motion key editor right here. And below that is a sprite editor. So these are all used for animations, okay? We talk about these various tools in other tutorials, facial key editor, motion key editor, prop key editor, and the layer editor. Now, one final thing I forgot to mention as well is the existence of the 3D view button up here in the toolbar, right beside your uh, camera controls. If I click the 3D view, suddenly you'll see that our uh, our scene will go into a 3D view. I can hold the Alt key and my, my right mouse button, and I can rotate this 3D view. And you can see where everything is in your scene on the Z plane, okay? And you can move this forward or backward by using the uh, the gizmo. That If you select each item, you can move it backward or forward on all axes using the uh, the gizmo. Okay, another way you can do this is if I go out of 3D view right here and I go into my regular view, we also have this button down here, uh, like I showed you earlier, you can move it forward or backward on the 3D view and you can see it'll go in front of certain items on your scene like that, this little uh, arrow gizmo on the bottom there. All right, and again, just left click and drag any uh, your object into any uh, position on your scene. And that's really all there is to it. So, so you know the existence of the 3D view and how you can uh, move items in your scene all along the Z axis as well as the Y and the X axis. So that's about all we can cover in this tutorial. Uh, thanks so much for watching. A brief introduction to the UI of Crazy Talk Animator 3. We have a lot of other tutorials that go into more details on a lot of the features I covered here. So check those out on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, check out our forums at forum.relusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.